please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, can I have a roll call, please? <coughs> Alderman Bowman. Present. Alderman Bacalier. Alderman Reed. Present. Alderman Milner. Present. Alderman Dickerson. Here. Alderman Long. Here. Alderman Turner. Here. Mayor Hassock. Here, and we do have a quorum. Uh, we do not have any ceremonial matters tonight. Uh, so at this time, I will open the floor to public participation. Uh, anybody who has anything to bring before this board that is not on our already scheduled agenda, um, this will be your opportunity if you're here to give a comment about the, the change in trash services. Um, this will be your time to speak on that. This is when we have our discussion on item C. That will not be open for comment. So I will welcome comments this time. Mr. Roberts. I hope I came prepared. I, uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> if you would hand these around, that will tell you. I'm trying to stay on task because the, it's not very often you get to come to the city council and talk trash. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm sick of the <laughs> Sorry about that. Sure you are. <laughs> The guy died over there, huh? That was a great seat many years ago. So anyhow, uh, uh, my name is Ed Roberts. I live at 1302 South Edgefield Drive, Ward 4. And my concern is the bid proposal that was brought forth to the council concerning trash and the recycling. I find the proposal, one, very confusing, two, not specific, and three, several unanswered questions that I, as a, as a citizen now, would ask. Yard waste, first topic. Once a month, I find it not acceptable uh, to go once a month, especially during the months of March, April, May, June, September, October, and November. I could live with it during some of these other months when my oak leaves aren't falling and my acorns aren't falling, but I have a real problem <laughs> during those months. I really do. And if we don't pick them up, they're going to blow out in the street, they will stop up the gutter, the storm sewers, and many homes will continue to be flooded because of these backups in our storm sewers, because as you all know, there is a real problem with our storm sewer situation in this town. You can't do anything about a town built on three ditches, I understand, but it is a problem and the storm source must be kept clean. City ordinance permits, uh, does not permit burning. This is a violation that occurs regularly. If the chief was here, I'm sure he could tell you that, that the violation of burning leaves is very uh, rabid and it's going to get worse uh, with fire pits and things like that. Yeah, I'll have a fire pit and throw my leaves on it. <laughs> but uh, a burning is supposed to be against the city ordinance. Container being provided, I can't find any word of what I do with my container. If it's going to be provided by the service or if I have to go buy my own, which I still use my own on, on yard waste, just to have an extra one. If you bag your yard waste, the weight limits. I have beautiful oak trees in my yard that produce about 10,000 pounds of acorns a year. No, that's an exaggeration. <laughs> if you put a weight limit on my yard waste, I have a problem with the amount of acorns that uh, I try to get my wife to vacuum in the yard and get all the acorns out. Uh, and then the number of bags. I, I, I run as many as 10 bags. Some of my neighbors on a beautifully tree-lined street have many more than that. I think if you just drive down the street, Fourth Ward, which gets picked up tomorrow, you will see that problem. Recycling, uh, I'd like to see it go to glass. Uh, I, I don't mind taking it out to one of the one of the dumpsters, but uh, a lot of cities have glass as part of their recycling process. Solutions that I would propose to the council is one, or, or, or excellent service from a reliable company. 
excellent service from a reliable company. Did the bidders provide references? I could not, I went online best I could to find all the information I could and I, I couldn't find any references from the bidders that, and if they did provide references, who checked them, where can you find that, and then what were the response or responses from customers that they are servicing at this time. Customer service is a very important item also. When my trash is missed, I don't want to call and get a machine that will get back to me in two, three, or maybe not at all. I, I would like to talk to a person. Uh, I would like to know when that truck will return. Uh, uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow, Mr. Roberts. That would be great. Uh, but, but I'd like to see customer service improve. Our price is guaranteed for more than just the next year for the contract. Are there percentage raises in the contract that you're signing? Because I'm sure you're signing it for more than just one year. Uh, what's my raises on down? What, what's my trash going to be in three years? What's going to be the price? Is there a limit? Is there a percentage that they can raise it? Is there a limit that they can? Uh, what's the what's the cost that the city adds on it? This steps on toes, I know, but the city step adds a cost to that for franchise building. What is that cost? Uh, I, I didn't see that anywhere in any of the bids, as, as this is what my trash is going to cost me. I encourage the council to be more specific, to be open, and see what the citizens want and see what the citizens need reopen the bid process, hold a public hearing, announce it. We're going to have a hearing on trash, have people come and discuss it with you. If they don't show up, then that's their problem. They had the chance. But I, I, I am getting contacted a lot of places uh, that I don't want to be contacted. And, and was asked, hey, you need to go talk. Okay, so here I am. Uh, <laughs> in closing, we are spoiled, or we, no, we were spoiled by town and country. And I was on this council when we approved town and country. They, I think they did an excellent job, but times have changed. They no more exist. And I also do not understand, my last comment, I don't understand the closed session that you may be going into uh, to discuss this. Uh, I, I don't see the legalities of the open discussion. I, 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 if there's legal questions, then let's handle those, but let's don't go in the room and talk about and that's this. What, that's what the close was going to be, is if we had legal questions regarding okay. the there was, there was not going to be discussion about the, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll okay. do all that in the open, that's for sure. Okay, that's, that's yep. my, ask, my yep. ask of you. Yep. The citizens need to hear what you're thinking, and they need to uh, uh, be understanding of, of this process. If uh, you need to, you know, if you need legal, I understand that. Go into executive place. Thanks for your time. I hope you're not all not just weren't listening. I hope you heard me. I used to be a teacher. A lot of times they listened and didn't hear. A lot of times they heard and didn't listen. So I hope you heard what I had to say. Uh, but those are my concerns, and I thank you very much for your time. All right. Thanks, Ed. Thank you, Ed. All right. Mr. Foster, thank you for your patience. I had encouraged Mr. Roberts to come to him. I'd make sure if he raised his hand, he got first. So I wasn't trying to... To, That's fine. To dog you there, so I appreciate I, you being patient. I enjoy seeing Mr. Roberts wound there. <laughs> Cut down those trees. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go rake my yard. <laughs> I thought maybe he was gonna go paint your house. <laughs> John Foster, Ward One, Twenty Six Nineteen Duncan Circle. I'd like to visit just briefly with you, if I might, about uh, a little problem we had of too much water in this community. Uh, I understand floods are caused because there's too much water. Saturday afternoon, I jotted down some thoughts, and little did I know we was going to have a second flood. So, if you would, let me uh, share these thoughts with you. and. Uh, and then if you have questions of me, why well, yeah. Anyhow, I uh, titled this thing, uh, Dollars of Damage. 
heavy rainfall on July the 27th in our town done hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Could that damage have been avoided? In my opinion, some of it could have. Since 1968, my wife and I have subdivided several parcels of land in this community and have built in those subdivision parcels. City codes required engineering and surveying by registered people, qualified people to do the design work to meet city, state, and federal guidelines. Watershed was included in those designs. Wide flow line areas, berms, swales, terraces, retaining areas, re retention areas, and gentle slope grading. These subdivisions are then accepted by city government. Then the new property owners showed little to no responsibility to maintain of the water and then the floodways. We've seen builders come in and sub into, subdivide, into subdivisions, grade down berms, fill in swales, defer water, run of water from one lot over onto the next property owner. This has been uh, drainage code, and I'm sorry, there has been few drainage code rules or enforcement. Property owners cannot take all the blame for their, there is no guidelines for them to go by. There is a different need for this city. There is a definite need for the city to adopt some sort of strong water management. Waterways and floodways should be graded in such a way that the water would fit. When the drainage area is split, two property owners, one owner maintains his side, the other owner doesn't. That allows the drainage channel to move toward the maintained side creates major erosion. I can show you a sewer line where this has happened, and there's three to five foot of that sewer main that is exposed, 100% exposed, and beyond the concrete casing when that uh, sewer line was installed over 20 years ago. I, uh, today, had the privilege of seeing what the city staff has put together as a flow chart of some of the damage it had in the in the city, and I was most grateful to see that. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen anything like this in this city when we have, a, have had flooding. Uh, we show the commercial side of things here, we show the residential side, we show some of the reasons for it and some of the reasons we don't know. There was sewer backup, there was some pump failure, but there has never been anything said on the flowchart about the fact that the drainage easements are full of brush and driftwood. I have the misfortune of owning uh, 215 feet of property that is on Town Creek between Oakland and Commercial Street. And I think it would be a conservative estimate that I've got a carload of driftwood and debris on that property. And I think that part of that property, part of that debris has come all the way from Lake Luna forward. I've even got railroad tries and trash barrels. One other thing I'd like to share with you, I have great concerns with the spillway at the two city lakes. Lake Luna was built in 1906. That makes it 100 plus years old. The spillway on that appears to be a WPA remodel job which would have been done in the 30s and the upper lake was constructed in the 30s. As I looked at that Saturday, it appeared to me that there's been underwash on the concrete spillways. I don't, I cannot imagine in my mind's eye if there's a breach of either one of those dams. And of course, if the upper lake breaches first, well, the lower lake will. But I can't imagine the damage it'll do on the way down the stream. I was going to ask the question, the city staff was going to put together a plan. I don't have to ask that question. I'm grateful to see that, and uh, Mr. Welch, uh, I assume that you're the one that helped get that organized, and I congratulate you on that. 
I uh, question about uh, the number of, um, of residents that is listed. I'm sure that a lot of people had damage and did not report it. Because you can drive through the subdivisions and you can see uh, trash stacked out on the uh, on the driveways and you can see uh, containers scattered around town that's been filled up. But anyhow, uh, I know that we have an engineer that is recognized throughout the state for his uh, ideas on water control and uh, most of you know that I uh, nickname uh, our engineer Ted Martin as Watershed Ted. Uh, I think that you should definitely use his experience and his knowledge and get us some type of waterway uh, planned where we can uh, get past DNR, FEMA, and the Corps engineers and get uh, the brush and the trees and the driftwood out of these creeks. Any questions of me? If not, I appreciate your time. Uh, let's, let's give this some very serious attention because uh, we all know when you have a water problem, uh, and, and if you're a homeowner or property owner, the biggest problems you have is water. Either the sewer leaks or it backs up, or the roof leaks, or the gutter spills over, uh, or you're on a floodway. Uh, you know that water is a major problem for any property owner. And if you can avoid that, and we need to be thinking about that. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, John. Is there anyone else who would like to speak this evening? Seeing no one, I will close public participation. We'll move on to the approval of minutes. Uh, tonight you have the minutes from the Board of Alden regular meeting from July 17, 2017. Move to approve. Second. Motion from Alderman Dickerson and a second from Alderman Milner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. All right, agenda items. Uh, first up, we have uh, the need to change our first meeting in September because it falls on Labor Day. Um, option listed is Tuesday, September 5th, uh, since the next following Monday interferes with the MML conference and several of us, of us will be along for that. Um, I assume with it being budget time, we probably need to have, need to have a meeting and it's not a one that we would like in July, when we just kind of skipped the meeting. Uh, if so, because Marcelo left from that meeting, I'll be at an NPR conference that week, and mm -hmm. it starts on that Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm open to, to I mean, if we need to have a meeting, we can have a Tuesday. If we think we don't need to have the meeting, we could have one meeting in September. I mean, it's our two options. How close do we have to beat it over and have a how far out do we have to know before we have to have one on Tuesday? Well, you'd have to you'd have to advertise it Friday since the Monday's a holiday. Oh, that's right. I forgot no. about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we we finished up with budget in a week and a half, so we may still be far enough out that we're not going to have anything. I mean, we still have another meeting. We still have another meeting coming. So I guess if you want to think on it for now, if you want to tentatively plan to not have one, but the fifth would be. Available if need be. We can decide at the next meeting to. Yeah, that's great. You all think we with that? All right. Sounds good. Uh, moving on, Council Bill 056. Council Bill 056, a resolution of the Board of Alderman of the City of Harrisonville, Missouri, authorizing the City Administrator to execute a purchase agreement with Zone Zane for purchase of 20 desktop computers in an amount not to exceed $19,800. Our IT director is here if you have any questions, but we have a large purchase of computers. We're just doing it all at one time for all the different offices. Uh, so this is over $15,000, so we brought it to the board for approval. Uh, it was done through a cooperative agreement, total price of $19,800. And we also compared, to, compared it with a couple of other quotes uh, just to make sure we're getting a good price. We're satisfied with that. Okay. What kind of computers are they? Dells. Dells. Okay. What happens to the old computers? <coughs> uh, we'll hold them, keep them in case we need to take some replacement parts out of them. Uh, eventually, we'll give them. To, we'll be end up giving them to a recycler. Uh, pulling the hard drives out, we destroy all of that. Uh, but the 
internal pieces somebody might be able to use. There are shredders now that will shred your hard drive. Yeah. We have a sledgehammer. <laughs> I know somebody that will take it and do it, pick it up, I think, and shred it for you. Yeah. So you're saying you have an office space moment with the hard drive? Yes. Yeah. Take out the frustration. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anybody have any questions? I have a question for Jeremy. Uh, does staff prefer desktops, or do we have staff that need laptops to take with them out in the field? Does that ever happen? Uh, typically, we address that when at the budget time. If we know that they're looking for a laptop, we actually ask that they request that. And then if that's part of it, we budget a different amount because the laptops typically cost more. Right. Um, but we always are looking at that. So this in this year, we don't actually have any laptops that are being replaced. Okay. So they would, they would come out here at a, as part of the same contract, but at a different price. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thank you. All right. No more questions. I think we can a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Motion from Alvin Milner, and I have a second from Alvin Dickerson. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And Council Bill 056 becomes Resolution R033. All right. Item C, trash collection request for proposals. Um, we do have the proposals here before us. Um, Mr. Roberts stated he'd like to know what we think. I don't know about anybody else, but my phone and my Facebook and my email have been blowing up with people commenting mostly about the yard waste. That's the biggest <coughs> concern um, is the change. And I think he hit a, kind of hit some of the points that he really did about, you know, we used to be able to burn once upon a time, but DNR no longer allows you to do that. It's not that the city just said, hey, we're not going to let you do this anymore. It's a higher power telling us that. So, you know, that was how a lot of people got rid of the yard waste at one time. Um, we do have lots of trees in our community. I know my yard's no exception. Uh, so the concern of, of using those brown paper bags that one good rain and the bags are you know, very brittle and sometimes don't survive the week to get out to the trash, you're expecting them to be out there for a month. Um, I was concerned with it, with it changing. I realized it could possibly up the price because you're asking for them to pick up yard waste more than once a week, but uh, I think it's definitely a concern. I don't know what everybody else has been, been hearing. I kind of want to open this up to see what you what you have heard, what you think. Um, and, and, you know, if, if we decide that we think we need to make a change to the, the amount of pickups for yard waste, whether it's once a week or once every two weeks or during a certain time, it would require having the uh, companies adjust their bids. We'd have to give them all the opportunity. We can't just say, well, we like your bid, we're going to ask you, well, how much more would it be to add this? We have to give them all that, that opportunity. But uh, anyway, so if you have a comment. Uh, well, I did, I have, I've had plenty of phone calls about it. Uh, I've tried to narrow down what everybody wanted. Most consistent one was they didn't want WPA back. Let me see it. Or whatever they are. <laughs> They're really not like them, and they want the yard waste. I told them the price would be higher, mm -hmm. and so I said, I don't know how much, of course, but they wanted to keep it, pick up weekly. Then there were some that wanted to pick up, they could do monthly, like June, July, and August, but they wanted September, October, November, December, a week to pick up because that's when they felt like the leaves and the most of the debris was going to be there. Then we talked about storms. And then they, they also, uh, another thing they wanted was the city to have a brush drop-off place that they could take a brush, drop it at all. Amen. I, you know, I know that costs for the, uh, you know, the employees to be out there, but if there was some way that it didn't have to always be monitored, I mean, I know we might take a risk of somebody bringing things we don't want, but it, when I grew up in this town, it was always out of the lake, and, you know, you could go out there. Now, I'm not going to say they just dump garbage and things out there, but that was a nice thing for the people to know that they could just go out and dump and maybe once a week somebody go clean it up or I know we have chippers now but and that may not be the case but people would like to have that especially since we've had so many storms 
you know, I mean, I've had limbs down, I'm sure has, but John was just referring to the fact that the creeks are full. And uh, maybe we need to look into something like that. We have a place to drop off brush that people can just go out there on maybe one, one day a month or twice a month or something to do that. Now, those are the calls I got. And I just said, well, it's up to whatever we decide here. But I kind of played down the, the, the thing about dropping it off because I know we have to pay. And I don't think Rodney needs any more work. But, uh, if there's some way we could do that, I think that would be a big success for, for us, or make things better. Yeah, I think yard waste is the biggest, one of the biggest issues. Yeah, yeah. And the drop off, you know, and I don't know if it's even a possibility or something, but you know, there's enough companies that deal in mulch and all that kind of stuff. If there be anybody out there that might want to come take it and mulch it up and some of them are going to blow the leaves into the gutters. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know I mean, if you don't have it, well, I mean, we're going to blow it I mean, into the, the gutters. Some of them are pretty angry. The way we do the drop off now is the is the, the electric crews one out there and they've got the shredder and all that out there to to shred it as it comes in um, you know I know that they're on a on a rotating schedule to trim trees and I'm sure they're they don't have a lot of downtime as it is it's actually multi-department uh, uh -huh. generally the electric department the tree side will uh, set everything up but it gets staffed by street department and right. water department personnel also. Now, a question I had was, I, know, I, I understand the need for somebody needing to be there, so you're sure it's going to not Number one, you need to be sure it's residents, because we could get, that's the other problem with leaving it open, you yeah, can get people from all over deciding, hey, I can go to the city dump and dump it. And two, is that they're not dumping anything but limbs and leaves and all. Is there room, I mean, I've been out there several times, is there room that, you know, we could do a drop off where there's maybe one or two staff that like on oh, maybe it's the last Saturday of the month or something that you can go dump. They don't necessarily shred it right then and there, but it's uh, there is room. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, staffing is gonna be the real problem. Mm -hmm. um, we're either gonna have to budget for overtime mm -hmm. or I'm not sure We'll have to put some thought into what all of our options are. But. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not thinking have the full crew like we normally do on a when we're doing wood chips and all that, or just a. I mean, it's an option to consider is could we have it opened up and like I said, it doesn't take much to you know somebody sitting where you drive in to say yeah, I, you know, the load's okay, dump it over there. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's a self-serve thing. You're going to unload your own stuff. Staff's not there to unload it for you. They're just there to monitor the. The dump site that you are bringing your brush, and then uh, in, in theory that works, but you're always going to have the little old lady coming up who's mm -hmm. taking up one branch at a time to her mm -hmm. car and put it in her trunk because <laughs> mm -hmm. she's not really going to be able to unload herself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think it would require some staff. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think you'll want to chip it at the same time, it just <clears throat> otherwise, you're going to have an entire crew in there for a full day mm -hmm. later. Okay. Right. I do agree with John though about the leaves and the trees. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably why we're having more of that. If you're going to go to take it on day two, we're all going to take it. I am definitely the belief that we need to see about what and how it would change these proposals if we <coughs> ask them to up it to once a week pickup. Um, did discuss. We think, believe we could offer each company the a, a window of time to respond to the additional request rather than reopening it as all new bids. If it's very, I think if it's very limited, I think that that would probably work. You, if you get an objection from one of the bidders, then I would suggest that maybe you consider a rebid. But but if you're going to add, I think several other items. To it, I think you get to a point where you may need to just refuse the bids and issue a new bid. I mean, the two the two issues I have heard are a the yard waste is obviously number one, and then two is who will the company be? And, and like David said, we've had some people that have, have voiced their opinion that they don't believe WCA has, has proven themselves to be a reliable company. Um, so those are really the two main issues, I believe. All the bids, if I read through them right, they did include 
a bin, one bin. You can get one trash bin, one recycling bin. Right. Yard waste usually is your own bin or your own trash can. Right. That you use. Right. And then, as far as the citywide cleanup, it's the same. It's a three-day cleanup. I mean, where it would be is all depends on who it was. The BCA has a transfer station, so obviously you can take it there. Um, back in the day, before the, or before town and country built that, we always set up down at the um, road department. We had dumpsters, and people pulled in there, and you still dumped your stuff. Staff unloaded it, and you didn't have to. It's just it's actually closer, so in some ways it was nice, but you couldn't just drive through and haul it out. Um, those are the two main things I have heard. So I I'm of the opinion that we should send this back out to have them adjust their bids for the every week rather than once a month. All in the moment. Um, I agree. The majority of the opinions that I've had have been about yard waste. Now I did have some people that said they felt that a workable compromise might be to have a monthly pickup during the winter months, um, barring a bad winter, and then having a weekly pickup from spring and summer. Um, specifically perhaps from December to March, have a once a month pickup and then the rest of the year have uh, a weekly pickup that might help with the cost. Mm -hmm. Um, it was really not needed weekly during the winter months. And then the other thing that I heard was um, my, my responses were pretty much half and half. Um, I had a considerable number of people who didn't have any problems with WCA, and then I had people who did. So, um, you know, I think we all have experienced that. But, you know, I think there are some other things that, you know, Mr. Roberts asked if we had checked references on the companies. And I think it's probably important that we look at doing that. Um, I think we need to know some things about the contractor. We need to know their safety record and we need to know their reliability and what happens if if they, um, let's say they had a major piece of equipment breakdown and they couldn't um, haul and process and dispose of our garbage I think they need to have a backup plan, a contingency plan, if they can't get our waste. Um, I just think there are some things about the contractor that I would be comfortable and I think our people would like to know, beyond just what they're going to charge us. Um, you know, what happens if they change and they, aren't, they are no longer going to pick up a particular item? How are they going to communicate that to us? I just think there's some things, um, and I can share my thoughts with you, happy if you'd like. Um, but I think there's some things that we need to know about these contractors above and beyond just how much they're going to charge us. Well, for starters, any of the concerns about what they do pick up, the changes, what they do in the event of these emergencies, all those would be worked out in a contract once we award the bid. Because the bid is basically saying this is what we're going to charge you for that price. We then negotiate the contract in terms of that and they either accept that or they don't. If they do not, then of course we would have to rebid or we could go to the next you know, next bidder. Um, as far as references, I did, we did discuss uh, just in a general discussion about contacting uh, uh, see Pleasant Hill, Greenwood, and Freeman, I believe, of all three just changed to one of the bidders. Um, I believe the Kansas City area has one of the other bidders. I mean, obviously, we've gotten We've gotten our share of feedback, as you said, on WCA, and it's, we've had some of uh, both. Um, and then, you know, you, you can go out and find uh, you know, reviews and ratings on companies and what type of, you know, what people are saying. Um, as far as safety records, I'm not sure where we would, that could be something I guess we could ask for in the contract is what you're... Actually, there is um, an either known as an experience modifier rate. It's how they compare with other businesses within their same um, industry classification system. So there is a way to check their safety. And I think, you know, if they're going to be in our neighborhoods, um, interacting on the streets with our cars and our school buses and our children, I just think we need to know a little bit about them and their qualifications and what their safety record is and about their employees. Um, are there, you know, one of the issues we got into with town and country and WCA was when 
when WCA, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when WCA bought Town & Country, Town & Country had, or WCA had an exodus of drivers. And so they had to recruit and retrain new drivers. I might think tenure of a driver is important because that means that's an experienced driver. So just, I just really feel like there's some things that we need to know about the company that we're doing business with. All right, any other comments? May I was just going to suggest that I, I think it's good for for all of you to provide feedback because as the mayor said, typically you select a bidder to negotiate with and then we negotiate with them and put together a pretty specific contract about trying to address issues like this. So the more feedback that Happy and I can get on that, the more inclusive we can uh, get that type of uh, issue covered in the agreement. I appreciate that and I'm happy to share my thoughts. I just think we want to get it right. You know, our people have been through a lot lately with trash collection. And and I just really want to make sure that we're offering the best quality contractor that we can and we really get it as close to being right as we can. Now I had actually looked at the suggestion about the months of the year and Mr. Roberts provided it looks like it's a seven month period. I was thinking of a six month because it's half the year, it's, it's a divisible number. March, April, May, I think, would be the most intense in the spring because, you know, as it starts to warm up in March, some people get out. April, obviously, the rain, people are really getting out. But by the end of May, I think most people have done the majority of their cleanup of the remaining leaves and all that. And then come the fall, um, you know, it used to be October when Halloween came, you could buy the bags to decorate your yard with, you know, filling with leaves. I even with all the trees I have, it's usually November before I start losing leaves. So the consideration I had was October, November, even December, because I usually am out in December. The weather seems to be warmer in December, and you're out just picking up leaves, getting the last little bit of the winter. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's something the companies would entertain, you know, is doing it for a six-month period, or if it would be, if that's what we would need to decide, we wanted to bid it as every, every week, all year long, or I don't know how difficult is it for them to figure out, okay, these three months out of the year and then these three months out of the year. But it's clear from the bids that our residents are going to be paying more. Correct. And I hate, I hesitate to raise price for our citizens and reduce service. Correct. I mean, you're going to, you're going to raise it even higher, I believe, to get the either every week or even the six-month period. But again, I think Mr. Roberts hit the nail right on the head. We were spoiled with town and country. They, you know, we got a very good rate, and we rarely had a lot of complaints about the services. Um, so, you know, it, you're, you're not going to get that same service at the price we want, and it's just not going to happen. I mean, that's just the reality. I don't like any more than anybody else does, but, you know, this is the company's telling us this is what we will charge you. It's not us saying, hey, you know, we're going to. It's not a price set really by us other than accepting. What have, the, have we checked into you comment on the fact that some of the neighboring communities have some of these people? Have we kind of checked with them to see what their base price is, what they're looking to pay? Are, are, are our bids comparable to what they're paying? Those are close. We've checked with the other communities uh, on the services that. that uh, the bidders that we had to make sure that they were, that they were satisfied with it or not. And they're comparable in price? Yeah. Do we know um, if the bidders that have submitted to us are utilizing Harrisonville people? Are, do we have Harrisonville employees? And are those employees being utilized for trash? For our city. Do we, know that? we didn't ask for a list of employees and residences. No. I think you're going to get them sporadic. I don't think you can have any company. You, you could have done that with ADS. I can tell you there were very few I met right off the bat. Most of them had bought homes in Raymore and Pleasant Hill. So um, the likelihood that you're going to get, and you're going to get a, a mix of what. So that's just how that works. So if we are. It, it sounds like the overwhelming response is that we are not comfortable with accepting the current bids of once a month. How do we want to proceed? Do you want to, I assume we need to take a vote on how we want it. 
Well, I think I think you could take a vote. You could decide by consensus the direction you're going to get Mr. Welch to proceed. I mean, if by consensus you want to reject all the bids, you certainly could. I don't know that you necessarily have to. I think if you're going to reject all the bids, I'd probably be more comfortable if you actually have a vote to do that. So we'd actually have to reject them to then ask for a new, as we discussed, asking for them to include the addition. If, if you're going to ask for a, a modification, then um, I think you need to decide specifically. It needs to be minor. Mm -hmm. And I would think increasing the number of yard waste, if that's the only thing you're doing, that I would think the instruction, what you would want to do is vote to tell Mr. Welch to do that, what that would be, and then he would notify all the bidders that this has been the request, give them a period of time of response, and it, as part of that request, see if there, it's acceptable that this procedure be used. I think if you have somebody say, we, we need to rebid the whole thing, and they make a big noise about that. And I don't know that, that it's mandatory you do that, but I'd probably recommend that you then just reject the bids and ask for new bids and put in the the, the scope of, of what you want to be in the agreement and start over. So you've got a couple of choices. And I would suggest that Mr. Welch ask the contractors what would the how would a weekly waste collection affect the bid? And then how would a weekly waste collection bid for six or seven or eight months of the year? In other words, go ahead and get two bids, see what they would charge us to do it every week. And then if, that would, if their bid would be different if they did it six or seven or eight months out of the year. So we could ask them, we could have, the only change we're asking really is the yard waste. We're not really making any other change to the service. So we could have... Brush, brush, brush drop off is us, right? Yes, yeah, that's the, the yeah. That's all that. Yeah, that's us, and we still would do it as yeah. normal. So we could ask for the bids to include a bid to add in both the monthly or you know, the weekly and then the, the suggested six months so you're looking at either 52 weeks or 26 weeks. Correct, yeah, so you, yeah, and ask them what would be, uh, provide both, and then we have both numbers to look at, and then we could decide, okay, with that, we could decide, okay, do we want to do just the six months, or if it, you know, we could say, oh, well, it's not that much more, let's do every week, so, um, and then that way we don't have to redo the whole thing, but we still need to reject these as is and instruct him well, to. Well, I, I think you, I think you go back if you vote that you want to have happy reach out to them about this, mm -hmm. then you're not telling them that the, you've not rejected the entire bid at this point, that you're just asking questions about how that would affect their bid. They're open, the bids are all open. They all know what each other's done at this point so in time. Adjusting them, but those would come in closed. They would correct. still ask for some closed numbers, I would okay. suggest, coming back to him with the modification um, and then you could decide, still decide to reject all bids and start over. I mean, I think you still have that option. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we need a motion to allow Happy to go back to the companies and ask for the additional information. Second. Second. Motion from Alderman Turner and a second from Alderman Milner. Make sure, I think you need to be specific in what you're asking. The motion is to ask Happy to contact the four bidders to, to get a price for both. Get proposals for twenty six pick up for once a week and then twenty six weeks. Yep. Twenty six weeks. We can decide we can decide that <coughs> if it's twenty six weeks we can decide that in the contract, right? If it's we can say, okay, these these are the 26 weeks we want it weekly, and they're not. Well, yeah. I, th I think once you have the, the general parameters, I think there's a certain amount of leeway okay. in negotiating the terms. I just make as sure. As long we don't as you don't, 
you, as long as you don't go so far beyond that it, I mean, it looks like it's being unfair. We don't need to dis we don't need to decide these are the months that we're going to do it now. We're just saying I don't we, think, we believe I don't six think months. You have to do so. Well, I don't yeah, think yeah, yeah. twenty six weeks and fifty two weeks. Correct. Okay. Even during the winter time we have a big ice storm. Mm -hmm. Now you got limbs and right. don't get picked up once a <coughs> month. Okay. All right. So let's, did you get all that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Um, I will note that that will change our, um, when we go to executive, we can no longer be legal. Well, why don't, I would suggest you just put it in there in this case there's some additional questions. questions. Legal wise. Okay. Legal wise, legal. we may not need that, but okay. there could be. Okay. All right. That way we're covered. Sounds good. All right, that concludes the agenda items. Uh, Alderman Committee reports. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just really want to take the opportunity to commend our citizens. Uh, we've talked a lot this evening about flooding and the wide um, range of people that were affected, either with an inch or so of water in their home or in their basement, the people that were flooded severely. I am so proud of Harrisonville and the job that you've done helping the trade fair and helping your neighbors with. Um, water and moving furniture and, and it, it's just been amazing to watch so I really just want to commend the staff for what you've done to assist our citizens and I want to commend our citizens for jumping in there and helping each other thank you Mr. Mayor. thank you Alderman Bachman Alderman Reese I just returned from um, Orlando area and it's been real interesting watching some of the problems that they have in terms of water and flooding because they've had a lot of water down there in the last few days and weeks. And it made me think when I was down there that we sit here in our council meeting and y'all sit out there with, with and bring the problems to us, which is what we need, of course, and how hard we work on these things. And sometimes we think we're the only ones that have these problems. And I watch those folks down there with their homeless problems. They really have homeless problems down there. They get out in people's boats and they, they stay all night in somebody's boats on the lake and things like that. And when I listen to the way that they're handling their problems and they're worried about them, and I look back at the way Harrisonville handles theirs, I too, Ms. Bowman, I, I too am really proud of the way that Harrisonville handles their things. Sometimes we fuss at each other and we should because that's the way things get done is to give all kinds of opinions and just get it done. And Harrisonville, we're really lucky to be here. Thanks. Alden Miller. I got nothing. I just wish I could get my trash picked up. <laughs> About once, once a month, we get no day. Yeah. Alden Dickerson. Uh, I'd just like to tell everyone that Nancy Lincecum is uh, the lead here to be able to resign from the Historic Preservation Board. I suppose you all know it. You know, Nancy had been Alderman, I don't know how many, Dennis, you probably know. You served with her on the board. I think she did it. She had three times in eight years. Uh, in those years, they couldn't get anybody to do this job. It was really tough, and she always filled in and did a good job. But they're dedicated, and so uh, she will be missed. My hand. Yeah. All right. All in them all. Uh, I don't have anything to add. It's okay. All of them birthday, what I mean, Turner. <laughs> it is your birthday, correct? Yes, it is. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, I, we were on vacation. I missed the flood. So I, I was enjoying the beach while you guys were getting water. <laughs> but I kept on with my face club. Seen pictures and everything, and I really like how everybody came together and helped one another in the efforts. Uh, and then, of course, had a few complaints from people from their own problems with storms. We're working to get that taken care of. But, you know, it's just really nice to live in a small community where everybody helps out. All right. Mr. Welch. Uh, you got an updated uh, report. I was drawing your attention to item five. Uh, we put the type two ambulance, the one that we wanted to get rid of to help pay for the ambulance that we purchased. Uh, we put it out for bid as required by the ordinances. We did not get a single bid. So we're going to put it on eBay 
and hope that we can get uh, some bids in this time. Try to put a minimum on it of $20,000, uh, and then we'll bring it to the board for approval once the uh, once the bids come in. But I'm disappointed in all those that said that they wanted to put a bid in on it and or use it as a trade-in, and then they were gone. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, otherwise, you got my report. If you got any questions about it, I'm here to answer. All right. Um, well, obviously the flooding was uh, been a topic tonight. Uh, I was actually in Jeff City and received a text message uh, from the wife saying, asking if I had seen the flooding, and I didn't even know if it really rained that much because it was just spitting down there. Um, so I was kind of like all of the turn around, but surprised. And um, anyway, got back, and I mean, and thankfully staff was good about giving some updates. Um, I was one of the fortunate ones that I didn't have any issues, but uh, I know lots of people did, and a um, combination of dry weather, letting the water run through, sump pumps failing, as you said, lots of debris. I mean, it picked up lots of debris. I mean, there's debris in the creeks, but a lot of debris got picked up that normally wouldn't and drug off into the, uh, into the creek. So um, it was just one of those freak things that only happens hopefully once every hundred years or maybe longer. Um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, next month's our annual conference from, for the NML will be gone um, to that in uh, Tantara. Uh, it'll be the last time to Tantara before I guess it switches to Margaritaville. Um, last thing I have is there was an email sent, um, Alderman Bowman sent an email asking for updates on the, uh, where we are with some of our uh, planning for state audit. Um, not entirely sure why everyone wasn't copied on that email, including myself. Um, there was a citizen copy on it that several of the aldermen left off, but um, to update you, we will be providing uh, some memos coming up soon, um, part of it related to closed session meeting minutes that we believe should be released um, and not be closed session minutes. Uh, we do have some issues that have already been addressed, and we'll provide an update on what those items are, and some of the items will be updated uh, as we do the budget. You know, as we all know, we have money that is due back to the restricted funds. Um, however, we need to see when budget time comes, how much money do we have and where, uh, you know, how much of that can we pay now or we're going to have to, you know, we kind of have to come up with the budget and then we can come up with our plan. Uh, but we are working on that and, and it's, yeah, like I, I believe Happy mentioned, it coincides with budget, so it's been difficult, you know, juggling both things. but. I, I have heard nothing yet from the auditors when they will be back. Uh, if it's anything like when they were going to present the audit, I don't know if they're going to they say they will. Uh, I'm sure they will be back sometime after the first year. We'll be well, they have any way to contact us for show questions. Uh, anytime before 2018. Um, so, what, yeah. Yeah. so, with that, um, Alvin Dix, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even while I was on vacation, I took some classes so you know, on vacation. I took some classes and then this weekend I finished up. I got all my card classes. So I'm uh, a certified plumbing proficient. So I tried to get through that and took a little over a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You only beat me by a few hours. <laughs> Any year. Yeah, yeah, so yeah we all know why mine got pushed back. <laughs> I also completed my certification over the weekend, and we will be receiving our recognition at the conference. Um, so I will make three up here that will be certified by the uh, Missouri Government Institute. And for the record, um, I'm enrolled also. You can get there. Uh, there are several. Uh, <laughs> The webinars are available online, and, and uh, they're just about like doing it in, in person, so um, very helpful. All right. Uh, I move that the Board of Alderman go into closed session pursuant to the following section of the revised state uh, statutes of Missouri, section 620-0211 and RS620-0213. Okay. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Yeah. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Long. Aye. Alderman Dickerson. Aye. Alderman Milner. Aye. Alderman 
Alderman Reese. Aye. Alderman Bachman. Aye. Alderman Bowman. Aye. All right, we are adjourned to executive. Thank you, everyone. All right, you have a pleasant evening.